Shoot me. I drop this and we all die. I'm Sharonda Williams. Welcome to Prime Video Recaps, where I will be recapping some of our favorite Prime Video original titles in order for you to catch up before binging a new season. With Jack Ryan Season 3 premiering on December 21st, I thought you might need a little reminder of what happened on Seasons 1 and 2 of Jack Ryan. Sounds good. Jack Ryan centers around an up-and-coming CIA analyst who is thrust into a dangerous field assignment for the first time. He soon uncovers a pattern of terrorist communications that launches him into the center of a dangerous gambit with a new breed of terrorism that threatens destruction on a global scale. Jack Patrick Ryan, played by John Krasinski, has a PhD in economics and the moral compass of a Boy Scout. Jack once worked on Wall Street but was later recruited by the CIA to work as a financial analyst. Jack becomes suspicious of financial transactions happening in Yemen and soon begins to think they are linked to a new terrorist leader by the name of Suleiman. Jack goes to his new boss, James Greer, who is the new head of the CIA's Terror, Finance, and Armed Divisions, better known as TFAD, with his findings. But the Greer tells him he doesn't have enough information for them to make a move. Wow, I am impressed. And a backstory about James Greer, he isn't too happy about his new posting as he was demoted to a desk job after killing an asset. After Jack forces his hand, both Greer and Ryan go to Yemen to begin their search for Suleiman. While helping with an interrogation, Jack realizes the prisoner he is talking to is actually Suleiman. Suleiman is broken out of prison by his brother Ali. Jack tracks Suleiman's next location, which is Paris, but finds out that his brother Ali was there instead. They go to raid an apartment they believe him to be in, but Ali gets away as Jack is distracted when the apartment above explodes. Jack discovers that Ali has been communicated with Suleiman through a video game. He then pretends to be Ali to set Suleiman up in a trap, but he realizes that this is not his brother. All right, shut it down. It's not over. He knows no one's coming. It's not over. It's a lie. Just he wait. knows no one's Just coming. wait a second. Suleiman was orphaned with his brother Ali after a bombing killed his mother and destroyed his hometown during the Lebanon War. He and his brother escaped to France, where they became French citizens. Suleiman and Ali encounter much discrimination in France due to being Lebanese and Muslim. Suleiman is very bright and educated at the top of his class, but due to discrimination, he isn't able to secure work in his field of finance. While out with his brother, Ali shows Suleiman his gun, but they see that the police are around. In an effort to help his brother get away, Suleiman shoves the officer and ends up getting charged with assaulting a police officer and serving time. It is in prison where Suleiman is radicalized by extremists. After prison, Suleiman becomes a sheik or Muslim tribe leader in Syria and recruits men to serve his cause. He uses his learnings from business school to find a way to collect and hide money by using digital credits and his cell phone cards. Suleiman has a wife, Hanin, and three children. His constant thirst for power causes a rift in his marriage and causes his wife to run away with their two daughters. Hanin is intercepted by one of Suleiman's men and detained, but Greer and Ryan kill Suleiman's men and save them. <laughs> Suleiman is determined to make the Western world pay for the mistreatment he and his brother endured. Ali and Suleiman take a trip to Liberia in order to recover a body infected with Ebola for their next plan. They give the body to scientists who are able to weaponize the Ebola for Suleiman to use. Suleiman takes some doctors as hostages, but Greer and Ryan are able to save them and bring them back to the States. They quickly realized this was all a part of Suleiman's plan as all the doctors have been affected with Ebola. Suleiman's next target is the POTUS, but Jack quickly ruins his plans and ends up killing Suleiman. Greer is given a new post in Russia while Jack is offered to be the new head of TFAD. Greer leaves a note with a ticket to Russia to join his team as the season ends without knowing which role Jack will take. Thank you, sir. In the beginning of season two, we learn that Ryan made a decision to go work for Senator Marino in DC. It is then that he is sent to Venezuela to investigate an armed shipment. While in Venezuela, Jack runs into Greer who was sent from Russia to investigate the same shipment. While en route to leave Venezuela, Jack's boss and friend Senator Marino is assassinated by mercenary Max Schnickel, leading Jack to believe that the president Nicholas Reyes has something to do with it. In season two, we are introduced to Mike November, who works for the CIA and is the chief of station in Caracas. As Jack continues his investigation, he is confronted by Post Vanderbilt, another mercenary. 
Jack and Greer infiltrate an area and look into the shipping containers brought by the Almeda. Jack discovers equipment that leads them into a military group called the Empress, which is based in London. November's hand is forced by DC to send Jack back to the States since his intel seems to be a little too close to home. What the hell is that? I'm sending you back to DC. Jack, not able to let things go, is able to negotiate his travel to London. Jack is connected to the Empress CEO, Rupert Thorne, who reveals Max Schnickel's involvement with another client. Greer and Jack discover a company called Bogler, which has a patent that allows a user to penetrate the jungle canopy and map mining deposits. It is assumed that Reyes is using this tech to bring more money into his pockets. Jack almost apprehends Schnickel, but is able to get away. Jack tries to lure Schnickel in by speaking with his daughter, but Schnickel and Jack face off and Harry ends up killing Schnickel. Jack returns to Caracas and learns that Greer has found more information on Reyes' corruption, which eventually leads to Greer's kidnapping. Jack and November team up with the South African mercenaries to try to save Greer, but they later find that he was moved. In the meantime, Jack discovers prisoners being executed under Reyes' orders, along with mass graves and malnourished prisoners. Jack sends footage of the prison camp to news outlets to expose Reyes, which causes riots outside of the palace. We're going to get Greer! Gear up! Jack and November rescue Greer and almost take down Reyes until November convinces Jack to leave Reyes in office. Jack heads back home and meets with Senator Chapman. Jack discovers that Senator Chapman was working with Reyes and was responsible for Marino's death, since Chapman had hired Schnickel to kill Jack to stop his investigation. In the end, Reyes is replaced in office by Gloria Bonaldi, who would be a better leader. Chapman is arrested for the murder of Senator Marino and his other crimes. Greer ends up taking a break from the field. It's been a hell of a run, but it's over. There you have it, everything that you need to know about seasons one and two of Jack Ryan. Don't forget season three of Jack Ryan will premiere on Prime Video December 21st. Mm -hmm.